Okay, God is delivering people from Satan. This is deliverance ministry. Now, we don't talk about this very much as Western Christians because people think we're crazy. Well, this is real. And our society, as it's turning its back on God, I mean, it's actually turning into the arms of Satan. And many Westerners think that there is God's kingdom over there, and there is Satan's kingdom over there, and there's some neutral no man's land in the middle. They want to live a secular life in the middle, uh, de devoted to the pursuit of pleasure and entertainment. Let's eat and drink and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Um, but in reality, there is no neutral no man's land. You're either in God's kingdom, or you're under the ownership of the prince of this world, that is Satan. And so many Westerners find themselves playing with the occult, particularly in their youth, young, young years, and then there's a shadow remains in their life forevermore. And they don't know how to get rid of that shadow. And probably some people here tonight have got a shadow like that in your life as well. And the chances are you haven't spoken about it with anybody, but it's very real. And for some people it manifests itself in different ways. Um, so I, I sat next to a businessman once on a flight, actually from Denver to Spokane to Denver a few years ago. And he was waxing lyrical about his business. And he was a very secular guy. And I explained what I do. He said, I've got a question. He said, I got married 20 years ago. And before we got married, we went to an astrologer. We had our horoscopes drawn up. And he said, and um, the astrologer said we would never have children. And 20 years later, despite the fact that we wanted children, we'd never have children. He said, so was that astrologer telling the truth? It's a good question. So I said to him, well, it works like this. In the Bible, there are many promises from God. Um, but they remain in the Bible. But for them to be operative in your life, you have to act on those promises. You have to step into the Jordan and get your feet wet. Then you see God's promises come to you. You've got to step out in faith. And it's the same with the lies of Satan. Satan does not know the future, but if you accept his lies, they become operative in your life just as the promises of God become operative in your life. So when you accepted what that astrologer said to you, you were dooming yourself to a childless life. We had a good conversation on the plane, but this affects many Adventists as well. And it's not just people out there. This girl on the left uh, who's being baptized, um, she was she's the daughter of an imam in West Africa, a famous imam, and um, she wasn't married. One day she was walking down the street, and a spirit materialized in front of her in the capital and said to her, I will be your husband, and he wanted a wife. And she said, he said, I'll be your husband, and I'll give you anything you want. And she said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, name your price. So she names a very large sum of money in the Sifa, that's the uh, West African franc. And the money materialized on the ground in front of her. So she became that demon's wife for 10 years. And you may wonder what was happening in that marriage. It was a marriage in all intents and purposes. And he was very violent with her. Whenever a human being wanted to marry her, she would get beaten up by this demon. And this may sound strange to a Western audience, okay? But spirits do take on bodily form. Okay? And so eventually, she was so desperate, um, she started praying. She heard that Jesus sets people free. So she asked Jesus one night, as a devout Muslim, she asked him to set her free. And he said to her, she got a dream, she said, go to a certain city, and in the picture on your left, uh, the woman in the left, um, with the headdress on, she is an FM missionary who was raised a Muslim in Sierra Leone, and she became an Adventist when she was about 15, and was ostracized and cut off from the family. And in the Sierra Leone Civil War, she was forced into a refugee camp in Guinea, and she had a tough life because she was a former Muslim and became an Adventist. And this lady now, with her husband, so they now mentioned Sierra Leone, but they planted many churches among Muslims in Guinea, there in West Africa. And so she gathered a bunch of Christian ladies and they prayed and fasted for a week. And at the end of that week, the spirits came out of the girl who was being baptized. And take a look at the joy on that girl's face when she's being baptized. Amen. Is that happening? Yeah. Amen. Because um, we think of baptism as mostly dealing with repentance. What must we do to be saved? Repent and be baptized, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We read in Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. But in many parts of the world, baptism is less about repentance and more about an act of repudiation. I'm turning my back on Satan, and I'm entering the kingdom of God. And Satan's only done me harm, and I'm trusting Jesus to be my saviour to do me good. And so she is turning from the Prince of Darkness to the Prince of Light in that picture. And in the picture on the right, you've got her mother. And um, I was there, and I was preaching that weekend in that church, in, in, in the Muslim district of, of 
uh, one of the major cities there. And my mother came on to all the meetings, and I said, doesn't your, isn't your husband upset? She said, well, yes, he's in the mountain. And he doesn't approve me coming to hear an Adventist preacher every week. And I said, so why are you coming? She says, well, um, Jesus set my daughter free, and Muhammad is dead in a grave. So uh, what do you think I should do? Right. So it was very blunt. Um, and sometimes things are, are, are as simple as that. So um, I would encourage you, we have a website called Set Free in Christ. There's a, web, there's a manual you can download for free. The GC asked us to write that in 2017. We wrote it in 2018. And um, I would say there is, there is a very significant demand now um, coming our way from Adventists and non-Adventists who want to be set free of this shadow in their lives. And I want to encourage you like, to take this stuff really seriously. Um, there's a questionnaire about page 111. And I encourage you to just look at that questionnaire, 111, 112. And you may think that, okay, everything is fine in life, but what the reality is is that when you open a doorway to Satan sometime in your life, and you don't confess and turn away from it, Satan has permission to run right in your life. And if you indulge in a particular cherished sin, at first you think that you control that cherished sin, but after a while it controls you. And it becomes constant or addictive behavior. And this is what we call oppression. This is where Satan is gained control of a part of your being. The most common problem these days is uh, pornography. The second most common source of problems is childhood sexual abuse. And we see this all the time in AFM. Um, ladies come forward who have this inability to form healthy adult relationships. And more often than not, you can trace it back to what an uncle, brother, or father did to them. So um, when that happens, uh, you have to remove that shadow from their lives. Another common thing we're seeing in a very multicultural America is ancestral spirits. And we may not think much of ancestral spirits here, but um, you may have somebody in some, some parts in your family, in your history, who, who, who did a deal with the devil, quite literally. And they, they, they wanted knowledge and power without moral accountability, which is the attraction of the occult. And they, they made a deal with the devil so they could be um, a successful astrologer, or they could be a fortune teller, or tea leaf reader, or they could read the palms of people's hands, or they become an intuit, or medium, or um, you know, all, all these kinds of uh, avenues of playing with the occult. And then what happens is they made a deal with the devil so that if I get power and knowledge in this generation, the generations yet to come are sold into the service of Satan, and they don't know it. But what happens is when I die, the spirit attaches itself to the next generation down the world, it skips a generation, from grandmother to granddaughter. So a grandmother may die, and then the granddaughter starts slitting her wrists. You think, what's going on with this granddaughter? She had a happy, well-adjusted life. No, it's not because there's anything gone wrong with her, it's that now a demon has attached itself to her. Or um, uh, suicide ideation goes up, a whole variety of manifestations and symptoms of this. Uh, just recently we had a case of a young girl um, who was actually living overseas and she came to uh, uh, one of our Adventist colleges and um, she went to GYC and on the way home from GYC um, was possessed by a spirit. And, uh, they took her, they stopped the car off the interstate and they dragged her out of the car, a young lady, and uh, she was writhing and frothing on the ground at the gas station. And so I got a call about I know, 11 at night and they said, we've got a problem. And uh, so they showed on the video what was happening, and okay, this is what is happening. Well, we rebuked the spirits, and the spirits left her alone. But about uh, two or three months later, just about six weeks ago, um, she had another episode, and so two of my colleagues went to deal with it. And she had superhuman strength. I mean, it took like six guys to hold her down. And this was in one of our colleges here in North America, and the demon was trying to take her through the air um, and through the window, and it was sort of like jump out the window. And, by the grace of God, the demons came out, they were very visible. Now, this stuff happens in 2023. And I want to encourage you, um, do not allow an open door for Satan into your life. And this isn't just an academic discussion. Um, if you have a cherished or a private sin, if you have a sin that you've not confessed, if you've played with the occult in your past, and you've got some tarot cards from Ouija board in your basement, get rid of those things from your life. Because Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. This is what we deal with in the mission field every day. I get about two emails a day from people in America asking for help. I and my colleagues just can't keep up with it. It's just a tide of people coming in. And the cases are horrendous. We read these long stories of suffering. So take this seriously. And we are called to holiness. 
Okay? And Western Christians, we, when we think of the freedom of the gospel, what we really mean is, what's the bare minimum I need to know being to do to remain in God's kingdom? And then I've got free roam for my appetites in every other aspect of my life. That's what we really mean by the freedom of the gospel. Because when Paul talked about the freedom of the gospel, he spoke about you are free to serve on love sacrificially in love. And it's a freedom for the Christian is, is the freedom um, from selfishness to serve, to serve your neighbor as yourself. Whereas for many Western Christians, freedom is I want to indulge all my appetites and still somehow remain in God's kingdom. And so um, take this seriously. And um, if there's something in your life that you know is incompatible with God's kingdom, go home tonight and confess it and repent of it and turn away from it and ask God to give you the victory over that. And that may mean, mean you need an accountability partner. It may mean you need a heart to heart conversation with your spouse. But I mean, we come to, you come to this event here tonight. I want the Holy Spirit to come into your life tonight. And when you hear the Spirit speak tonight, and if He's convicting you of something now, don't harden your hearts. Act upon it. Because it was one sin that took us out of the Garden of Eden, and it was one sin that kept Moses out of the promised land. Do you remember that? Sin is serious, it denies us eternal life. So, we guess there are sins we're not aware of in our lives, and God's grace covers that. Um, he leads the motions of our heart, but if we're willfully holding on to sin, um, we're separating ourselves from our loving Heavenly Father. To be aware of new videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the Preparing for the Time of Trouble channel. For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, homestead remedies, how to be self-sufficient when the grid goes down, wild edible and medicinal plants, hydrotherapy, and end-time Bible prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.